All right, you can turn in your Bible to Daniel chapter 12. Uh, the book of Daniel is a very <laughs> mysterious book to me. I've, there are certain parts I understand and understand well, certain chapters, other chapters. It's just completely over my head. I don't get it. But uh, Daniel chapter 12 is one that has some really interesting things in it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on right now. And there's a lot of people that are just wicked and they do not understand it. And this is not some kind of a thing that you can just show people facts and statistics and whatever else. You try to show people things and they just, no, I, I can't agree with you. I mean, right here, coronavirus is patented. It was a created virus. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, hey, it's not really killing that many people. Well, there are people that have died, though, a good number. Yeah, well, the flu has actually killed more people this year, the seasonal flu. Well, I don't know. You just show people this, and it's just not getting through. Why? Well, because we're dealing with a spiritual uh, deception here. We're dealing with something that is that is part of the end time strong delusion that's coming. I'm going to read two verses here, and then we'll go back to the beginning of the chapter. Um, Daniel chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. I mean, who, who back then in Daniel's day would have understood what we're going through right now? <laughs> you know, I mean, they're going to bow down to the golden image there. Nebuchadnezzar set up and they say, uh, 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 hold on. Um, six feet apart, everybody. Okay. Six feet apart. Practice social distancing. All right. Um, you know. Make sure, hey, you don't have a face mask on. Do you need to be thrown in the burning, fiery furnace? You know, Put your rubber gloves back on. Come on. You know, see, you could have told Daniel, hey, the, the time's going to come and you know, show him a vision of people today. And he'd say, what do they have on their face? What in the world? Why are their hands blue? Well, that's called a rubber glove. Huh? What are those red spots on the floor? Well, that's where they have to stand. Are you kidding me? I thought it was bad here in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. This is horrible. You know, he wouldn't have gotten it. He wouldn't have understood. <laughs> Seal it up, Daniel, and you're not going to get it. People in the end times will. But look at verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Um... We have to remember something, brethren. Um, all of us are sinners, okay? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. There's none that doeth good. You understand? But uh, we have to realize, and you do, most of you do, but to keep it in your mind, these people that we're dealing with out there in the world, in the lost world, are some of the most evil, vile people that have ever walked on this planet. And they watch television and they watch news media uh, and movies and things and listen to music that has attacked the Lord Jesus Christ and torn him down. And they have mocked God. They use God's name as a curse word. These people are doing things that lost people a uh, hundred years ago even would have been mortified by. They just, I mean, you go back a couple hundred years ago, Catholics probably would have been mortified at what, you know, even saved people do today. You know, professing Christians. Um, what's my point? My point is, these people that are out there in the world, they're just, they're, yes, we're sinners, they're sinners. I get that. But their, their level of sin is something, you know, the Bible talks about in Matthew 24, because iniquity shall abound, the love of money, many shall wax cold. You see people that are doing stuff and, and things. I mean, we have uh, right down the road, there's people that are hit here, um, They've been here for years. I just thought they were tourists at first. You know, I see the New Jersey license plates on their vehicles, and I thought, okay, tourists, you know, and, and whatever. No, they live in the area. So there's some trying to skirt some kind of a system or whatever that they're not getting their vehicles registered in Maine. But uh, just uh, the, the woman, she works for the town, and um, how, can, how can somebody that's not even a resident of the state of Maine work for the town of, in a town in Maine and town government? boggles the mind, but um, she's not around. The only thing we can figure, we drive past their place every time we're going to the office or when we have to go shopping. And um, 
you know, vehicle's never there. And this guy's vehicle is there. And her husband. And I'm pretty sure he's an illegal alien. I don't think he's an American citizen. Don't know. But the Greek guy or whatever else. But we went past there the other day. And there's some other woman out walking around. And I'm thinking, okay, you know. Uh, all right, what's going on here? You know, she's not around. You know, the old saying, when the cat's away, uh, the mice will play, you know. Um, and, you know, you see this stuff all the time. People are incredibly, horribly wicked. They're just doing stuff all the time. And you just look at this and you think, wow, don't you people have any fear of God at all? And they don't. And that's my point. Um, yes, I'm a sinner, but I'm not doing that kind of stuff. I don't run around with my wife. I don't laugh about horrible, wicked things said about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't get drunk. I don't use profanity. Um, we're all sinners, I get it, but not like they are. Not at all like these wicked people out there. And these people, the Bible says in the end times, the wicked, they're not going to understand. They're just going to go along with whatever the television is going to tell them to do. God sends them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They're wicked. They have pleasure in unrighteousness. God says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Nuts to that. I'm going to go have as fun, fun with as many women as I want, like over there. Um, hey, uh, thou shalt not steal. Oh, well, no, I'm, I'm just going to lie about things and lie about my income and lie about whatever else and steal from the government, steal from the people that are actually working, you know, get welfare and things and whatever else. You see, thou shalt not bear false witness. Well, you just lie and lie and lie and whatever. See, these people are wicked. They have pleasure in unrighteousness. And so coronavirus thing comes along and they say, stop going to work because we have to keep you safe. Um, you have to stay in your home, stay at home orders. Uh, isn't that a house arrest? Isn't that what you do to criminals? So all of a sudden, boom, most of America has been criminalized. Stay in your home, criminal. I didn't do anything. Doesn't matter. You walk outside of your house, we're going to arrest you. How dare you? So uh, whatever happened to, uh, uh, you know, innocent until proven guilty? Whatever happened to my rights under just system of law? See, I understand because the Bible says the wise do understand and God gives me my wisdom, right? I'm spiritually wise. By the ways of the world, I'm not very wise. But spiritually, yeah, I understand what's going on. So I can look and I can say, well, wait a second, this is not lining up. This is wrong. This goes against everything, my God-given rights and constitutional rights and, and just common law. I mean, good night. But the wicked... They don't understand. Hey, put a face mask on. It's going to be completely ineffective, not going to protect you, cut off your air supply, the whole thing. Put a face mask on because the normal world is no longer safe for you to walk around in. It was safe back when the, you know, H1N1 thing happened and Zika virus and, and, and the world was safe. The regular seasonal flu that kills, you know, hundreds of thousands of people a year and whatever else. That The world is safe back then, but now... Now, nope, the environment is no longer safe for you to walk around in. You know, for how long? We don't know. Till the vaccines are ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm not safe. My body is defective. My body is no longer capable of living in this world. I can't fight off viruses and infections and bacteria and whatever else. I have to have chemicals put into my body because I'm somehow lacking these chemicals that don't occur in the body naturally. What's going on? The wise understand, but none of the wicked do. And I will just go right out on a limb right here. Uh, unless the Holy Spirit would intervene in somebody's life, I will say right now that uh, anybody that's wearing a face mask and not questioning anything, just, yes, sir, put the thing on, they're going to be taking the mark of the beast in the future. 
They're not even questioning it. I mean, you, you, you know, years ago, hey, we're going to put this mark upon your forehead. Revelation chapter 20 talks about it. Revelation 13 says in the right hand or in the forehead. But Revelation 20 says upon the forehead. You go back years ago, hey, we're going to, we're going to put some kind of a QR code or trichetra or whatever it's going to be. We're going to put the thing right on your forehead. Um, people would say, no. But see, if you can socially engineer people that wearing a mask around in public is normal and wearing rubber gloves and, and whatever else, that's normal now. Well, it's just a step or two away from having something put on your forehead, isn't it? If people are falling for this coronavirus scam thing, it's because they are wicked and they don't understand. And they're going to go right in and take the mark of the beast. But let's go back to the beginning of Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Talking about Israel in context here. And there shall be a time of trouble. What does Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7 say? It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Think, look at this. The children of thy people, Israel. What's another name for Israel? Jacob. There shall be a time of trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. You see, Scripture lines up. There's no great tribulation. The great tribulation. I always want to hammer that whole thing home there. Such as never was since there was a nation, even at that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. The Jewish people, the nation of Israel. Every one that shall be found written in the book. Their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Verse 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Talking about uh, not the same resurrection that we go up, because there's nobody going to come up to shame and everlasting contempt. But, you know, there will be people that come up in that time period. Um, verse 3, and they, sh and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, here's where it's a, uh, something I want to challenge you with as a Christian. Okay, um, We're not going to be in there. We're not going into the time of Jacob's trouble. I've proved that over the years. Uh, there is no such thing as a Christian that goes into that time period. Why? It's for thy people. Time of trouble for thy people. The children of thy people. Jacob's trouble okay it's for the nation of israel the church doesn't need to be purified remember what it says over there in verse 10 many shall be purified and made white all right go back to revelation chapter 7 and read about how that there's the 144,000 sealed jews and then the great multitude of people from every tongue kindred people nation whatever else and it says that they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb they have to wash their robes there's a sense in there where they're going to be you know, saved by works, partly by works, partly by faith. Faith and works in the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? You believe in Jesus, but you can't take the mark. Okay? It's going to let, you know, going to need to have some righteous living in that time period to be able to do that. All right? But what you need to understand here is, as a Christian, we have to look forward to the future and say, okay, our time is just about over here on the earth. Our days are numbered. The church age is ending right now. But what is the legacy that we can leave behind? See? Verse 3, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Well, ah, it's another little interesting thing there. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, or, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Um, what is an angel? Well, they're likened to stars in the Bible. Very interesting. So, you know, Hollywood, what do they do? They, they make fun of that. They say, you know, Hollywood stars. They have this walk of fame with all these different stars, names on it and whatever else. Where did they get that from? They're stealing it from the Bible. Why? Well, if you're born again, you're a star. You're going to be one of God's stars. A son of God. An angel, in other words, in the resurrection. So, think about what it's saying there. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Shining up there. Hmm. Interesting, because back in the book of Revelation, 
uh, talks about the Antichrist and, and things, and he curses, you know, God and the, them that dwell in heaven. So, you know, kind of an interesting thing that maybe, you know, when we're up in heaven with the Lord, there's going to be, you know, we'll be shining down towards the earth. Our testimony that we leave behind is going to be a shining example of what we were. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars hmm, forever and ever. Um, when you leave, uh, are people going to be turned to righteousness when they remember who you were and what you stood for? Are they going to say, wow, they were right. Those relatives that aren't going along with things, but they just, you know, they don't quite want to hear the gospel or co-workers or whatever else. Um, that's a great challenge. I mean, I see people that uh, aren't just falling for this whole, you know, going along with whatever the government says to do. They're questioning things and whatever else, but they're not saved. And I think to myself, you know, what kind of a, a legacy am I going to leave behind for those people? You know, are they going to understand, you know, why I left? And, you know, it's, it's a real challenge, really. But uh, just really something to think about. You know, just going over these verses and I just thought, you know, none of the wicked shall understand. And I just, you know, it's just, wow. What an amazing book we have here. And what an amazing God we serve. Um, so that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just something to think about, brethren. Um, you know, it, it's, it's easy to get drawn into this whole thing and, and think about, you know, what part should I play in this and stuff. We're supposed to hinder the Antichrist kingdom, certainly. Um, but we have a testimony, you know, too, that we need to think about. And, uh, and we need to be an example to the lost out there. So we will see you in the next video.